everyone to Big V TV for a Friday night. We're previewing all of the big games this weekend. 21 of them, in fact. Steve Chalmers, Craig Freeman with you. No Justin Nelson in the middle. Uh, clearly has better things to do on a Friday night. Maybe preparing, preparing himself for a big semi-final game one at home for the McKinnon Cougars. Might be the only Sunday game again. Could this be. Week, oh. McKinnon owning the Sunday slots at the moment. Correct. Could have a couple of game three grand finals oh, course, potentially. Yeah. But uh, certainly a locked in Sunday game. So Might have the sniffles, maybe. We wish him the best of luck. Let's crack through all 21 games tonight. Let's start with Youth League 2 women. Casey in first place, coming off a bye, takes on Frankston in a qualifying final. The winner, straight through to a grand final berth. Yeah, it's always tough coming off the bye. You know, you are rested, but Frankston will be in good form coming off a win, obviously. Uh, winner through to the grand final as you said Casey are 9 and 0 at home this year They've won four straight games and they knocked knocked over Frankston in the last round of the regular season That's right Kim Shanklin had 24 points and 16 rebounds in that game six plays and double figures mm. So keep your eye on them Frankston Cassie Boyer was best in both games against Casey But just need someone to stand up with her. Yeah, and the away from home form a little worrying for Frankston as well only five and five on the season their, their main hope here is jump out of the blocks quickly. Casey might be a little slow out of the blocks coming off a bye. They've got to really pick up a lead early, otherwise it's going to be hard. Packham coming off a loss last week, get a second chance at finals action. They come up against Whittlesey, who knocked over Blackburn last week in a do-or-die match. Yeah, cootsie has been at her best uh, against, this, against Whittlesey this season. Had 20 points, 6, 4, and 3, and then 13, 10, 4, and 3. She can do it all, as we know. We'll see four and five on the road this year. Uh, Liv Delmau start in their last game against Pakenham with 16, 6 and 3. And Hayley Wine, the only one who scored in double digits uh, in their return game. I think Whittlesey had a clash last week. LT Poa played the seniors. Yep. Um, they bowed out. I th assume that she'll be back for the Youth League uh, this weekend. Yeah, and that's a huge punch to add to the Whittlesey lineup. Will be a very interesting game. Cutthroat, best of luck to those two teams, and of course, Casey and Frankson as well. Let's move on to Youth League 2 men. Uh, Semi-finals, one game only. It's do or die. Uh, two winners go straight through to the best of series grand final. We start Frankston, who come off a bye against Craigie Byrne, uh, who won last week. Frankston, unbelievable at home. Yeah, they're 12-0 at home. They've won six straight. Tristan Lloyd and Ryan Wells have been very good all season for them. Craigie Byrne have been very good on the road as well. 8-5 and five on the season. Solano was huge last week, mm. getting him into this one. 33 points, 7-7. Seven and seven. Uh, they got another double-double from Tyler Wing as well. Yeah, that's right. Collingwood also come off a bye. They take on Pakenham. This is a big clash. Two versus three. These two teams know each other extremely well. Um, and there's a couple of key players from either side. Yeah, I think Manuel has been in great form all season. And Tommy Greer caused Collingwood problems last time they met with 21 points and 12 rebounds. Uh, while Lee Belton had 16 as well. We'll also see Dang Dutt for Collingwood. A couple of superstars in this competition going head-to-head -head in a do-or-die semi. You get a couple of grand final predictions there. Who will make it through? I think we will see Frankston versus Collingwood. Yeah, I tend to agree there. Two very good teams throughout the entire season in 2018. Let's press on to Youth League One women. Uh, game ones are in the books last week. The two away sides won. They now travel back home. We start with Keelor hosting at McKinnon in game two and, of course, potentially game three. This, I think, is the easiest game to pick. Nothing more certain, as Justin Nelson would say. Ooh, there we go. Keelor get the win probably in game two. I think uh, Villado and Byrne combination for the Thunder right now, certainly firing on all cylinders. Uh, for McKinnon, they asked for a miracle in round 18. They got that miracle. They knocked over Sunbury from memory. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of key teams around them lost to get themselves into the finals. Uh, Chelsea Branson was held quiet, relatively quiet last week. If they're going to be any chance, she needs to put in a big game. Yeah, I think in that last deciding game, she had a near triple-double. She mm. had a triple-double, nearly had a quadruple-double with turnovers, yeah. but she needs to turn it on and, and have a huge game for McKinnon to have any chance. The other semi-final, game two, Saturday night. Uh, that is at 6 p.m. is at Boardman Stadium. The Keelor game's at 7.30 p.m., mind you. Uh, Sunbury host Geelong, game two, Saturday night. Yeah, Geelong, uh, can they turn it around is, is the main question. Sanders was kept very quiet in the last one. If she can turn it on, it goes a long way towards them being competitive. Um, summary, when you're the higher seed and you win on the road, 
generally screams out that you're probably going to pick up at least one win at home. Yeah, they're in a commanding position, aren't they? Naomi Stowers, Chloe Angove, impressive as always. Uh, best of luck to those four teams. Youth League One men, game one, 67 to 66. It went in favour of the home side, Waverley Falcons. We mentioned on uh, Monday night, Sunbury had the chance to win it. It went in. It was unfortunately for them after the buzzer. Mm. What do they do to turn it around back at home? Well, I know they lost in week one, but I think they have to feel fairly positive about their chances. Kyle Collins had a brilliant season. He was held to just 11 points, 4 of 13 shooting. He had four turnovers. If he plays to par, they probably get the winner. Of course, Waverley did a brilliant job defending him. For Waverley, they relied heavily on getting to the free throw line. It worked very well for them last week, but the issue is if somebody change a few things, maybe they don't get as many calls. I think they have to figure out a way to put the ball in the basket a little more efficiently if they want to take home this series. It's going to be very interesting, though. You know, Do or die. Now it is for summary, um, and if they slip up, they're down. They're done. And of course, the bench stepped up for the Falcons at home, didn't they? Yeah, they only had 26 points from their starting five. Normally, the bench plays a little better at home, just generally. Yep. So they might need the starters to lift the game a little bit here. Yeah, fair enough. Big performance coming from Waverley if they are to win it. Saturday night, Boardman Stadium, 8 p.m. Uh, and of course, on Sumbra, uh, Sunday, if required, mm. at Sunbury. Nice little double header there on at Saturday night. 2 p.m. It does look like a nice venue to get down to. Let's take a look at another grand final, game two and three, respectively. It's Moulton Victorian Youth Champ women. Uh, Knox got Sandringham by 10 after they played an extra five minutes. We go back to Sandringham, and what can they do to even up that fixture? A couple of uh, stars fouled out late in this one. We saw um, Santa Maggio and Batiste both mm -hmm. fail out. A huge stat, Sandringham uh, lost by 10 in overtime. Ella Batiste played only 28 minutes because she fouled out. She was plus 19 wow. in those 28 minutes for a team that lost by 10. It just screams out how important she is, and I think... She just needs to shoot the ball more. She's a very unselfish player. Through the regular season, didn't shoot it that much either, but she's so efficient and, and so talented. I think they need to find ways to get her more shots. Just had the 14 attempts in game one. You're saying that that production's set to increase? Yeah, I think she can get the, the ball up a little more. I think as well, since the Siebel players have come back, like uh, Ella Batish, Meg Rogowskis has just quietened down a little bit. Yeah, she didn't get as many shots. Wasn't that efficient on the weekend either. Semi-final, uh, four points, two of 11. Game one of the grand final, she had six points on one of five. So certainly, if she gets going, mm. I'm sure the Sabres can turn it around. Uh, so that game at 7 p.m. at Sandringham Saturday night, and of course Sunday if required, back at Sandringham at 2 p.m. Let's take a look at the men's division, Moulton Victorian Youth Championship men. Nutter Wadding currently lead the series 1-0 against Eltham. And I'm telling you, I was at that game uh, last Saturday night, Craig, and Eltham, they just, they just weren't there. They didn't turn up. It was sloppy from the get-go, and they were playing catch-up from the first quarter. That's where it starts. They go back to the Eltham High School. They have a big crowd behind them. They've got their team energy around them. They need to start a lot better than they did in game one. Yeah, they really need to jump out of the blocks and get the crowd behind them. I think that's probably their best way of getting this win. As you said, I saw. I didn't see another one last week. I saw them the week before, and they were super impressive. Just clinical, and they got options all over the floor. I think their depth is huge, especially... Uh, with games two or three as required. If Eltham managed to win game one, they probably have to play their starters a little mm -hmm. heavier than Nutter Wanning do. Nutter Wanning have the have reliability off the bench, I think, a little bit more than Eltham do. That's right. There was times, especially during the first half, I know Eltham switched from man to his own defense, but too many times they'll find an easy pass just in that low block, short corner uh, stuff where they can get easy layups and stuff like that. For Nutter Wanning, they got a lot of open threes in the second half. I don't think that'll be as easy to come by when you reverse the trend and you go to the Eltham High School. Yeah, it's, got, it's obviously a lot tougher to shoot the ball well when you've got a crowd roaring against you than uh, for you, but not wanting to move the ball so well. I think this, I really highlighted this as a good series to watch, and I hope Eltham lift their game from game one because at their best, both these teams can put on a show. Absolutely. 7 p.m. Saturday night at the Eltham High School, as I've mentioned. Do, do you think we see a game three? I think we see game three and then another warning take it. 2 p.m. on Sunday, if required, back at Altham. Let's look at Division 2 women. We've got a qualifying final. Winner goes straight through to the grand final. It's the top two teams in the competition, Craigie Byrne versus Wallen. Yeah, we saw Wallen make a nice run at the end of the season to snatch up a top two spot. And 
this is why you try so hard. You want that qualifying final. You want the easier run through or the second chance. Craigie Byrne have been 8-1 and one at home this season. Nicole Cameron goes a long way to winning this one, averaging pretty much a double-double with 14 points, 9.7 boards. For Wallen, they had 20 turnovers mm. last week. They still got the win, but that's probably too many against a team of Craigie Byrne's quality. Yep. And uh, just need to control the game a little bit better. But it's going to be a tight one. Wallen in great form. Craig Byrne have been brilliant all season. Certainly their forwards between both sides are going to go a long way to winning this match. Elimination final time. Melbourne Uni uh, coming off a loss. Host Blackburn coming off the win against North East. Uh, Justin's spoken a lot about Melbourne Uni over the last yeah. two weeks. I think we're a little bit more kind to them. 8-1 uh, at home. That's a massive advantage at Tin Alley. Yeah, but their form is just <laughs> its shocking right now. I don't know how you could... Confidently tip them. They might be at their best of better team than Blackburn, but Blackburn are roaring at the moment. They're only four and five on the road, but they were very good last week, led by Sumskis, uh, who had 12 points, 17 boards, and four assists. They need that again. Belmonte's been huge. Um, mm. Two teams at opposite ends of form, but Melbourne Uni might be slightly talented. I think it's going to be a tight one. What do you think? Well, I think the, the offense comes in to so much importance for Melbourne Uni. There's too many times we've seen them score in the 40s mm. throughout the season and they've been losing those games. Their defense is, is very good when it's on. So if they score 50, 55 plus, they're going to be, be in with every single chance. Yeah, they are. And Blackburn a little more volatile as a team. They can get higher scoring margins, mm. but a little more up and down on the season as a whole. Yeah, correct. So Melbourne Uni, Blackburn, elimination final. Craigie Byrne and Wallen qualifying final, the Melbourne Uni game, in fact both games Saturday 7pm uh, at Melbourne Uni and Craigie Byrne respectively. Let's press on to Division 2 men, semi-final game ones in a best of three series. Uh, Melton who got the upset win last week, uh, kick off their semi-final campaign hosting Coburg. The Melton have been in pretty nice form on their home deck, 7-4 and four on the season. Man Yang came up huge last week. Upset win, as he said, against Southern Penn, who were looking mm. like a great team. That's a that's strong form win. He had 16 and 11, which is very impressive against their front line, which is a pretty talented and big front line. Coburg, 9 and 2 on the road this season, but they had three straight losses mm. heading into finals uh, against Altona, Pakenham, and Camwell. Some pretty handy teams there, but we know that in the past, Coburg have been a little inconsistent. They seem to put those uh, thoughts mm. to, be, to rest. Did this season, but a little slip up heading into finals. They're going to come out and prove it early here. Absolutely. I think the first quarter and, you know, which team jumps out of the gate, as you mentioned, is going to be super important in that one. 7 p.m. at Melton, also at 7 p.m. This one up at the Hot House for Mildura. Uh, they host Craigie Byrne, the top seeded team in the comp. Yeah, Calvin Henry led the way last week as he has for so many Huge. years. 25 points, 11 boards, 6 assists and 3 blocks. 7-4 at home this season, and normally it's a little harder to win up at the mm. hothouse than that. Craigie Burner, 8-3 on the road. Watt has been in great form, 14 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists. He could be a bit of an X-factor. Fair bit of talent going head-to-head -head here with uh, Calvin, and we know there's a couple of stars on Craigie Burn rolling around. Absolutely none other than Damon Smith. Let me tell you, that is semi-final game one. As I mentioned, 7 p.m. both those game times for D2 Might men. see a bit of uh, Damon versus... Calvin? Very much. You'll see a lot of Damon versus Kelvin up at the Hot House on Saturday night. Division 1 women time, uh, semi-final game ones, just like D2 men. Uh, Geelong host Casey at 5pm on Saturday night. Uh, Casey, very good on the road this season. Yeah, and Geelong have finished off the season very well. They were 9-3 and three at home this season. A little slidey at the start, but they've come through strong. They held Whittlesey to 27% for the oh. field last week. Defence was at its absolute best. Casey have won five straight. They even slipped up a little bit in the middle part of the season. Changed coaches. Both these teams roared home into finals. And I think it's, it's this is going to be a great game. Yeah, absolutely. Five straight wins for Casey. They're obviously coming off the week off. Um, you mentioned they changed coach and it's seemed to do wonders. They've mm. switched back on. I think Jamie Lee Jeffs goes a long way in this series if Casey are to advance. The other series, Warnable kickoff at home against Mildura. And this looks like a classic. Yeah, Warnable 9-3 at home. Holly Green was huge last week, and we know how good Wormald has been all mm. season. If them two are clicking, just about one of the best one-two punches in the comp, and you're probably coming up against the most consistent one-two punch in the comp here in Mildura. Uh, we know Gassion and Power have yep. been absolutely outstanding all season. Vanessa Power, 33% from the three-point line. I think if she shoots uh, more than that, 
that goes a long way to Majura winning because you know she puts them up in numbers. Mm. Um, a little bit about the travel here. This is an interesting one. You've got a stat about the travel factor uh, between these two teams. This is the third longest trip in the big fee, 530 kilometers. And uh, I think it's going to be a big, big matchup. Do Mildura fly out? Do they bust it out? How do they get there? No, they definitely drive. We know, we know Jimmy Madigan will jump into the emails. Let us know. And uh, what do you think about this trip, Jimmy? Because you say that you guys are the only team that actually travel, everyone else cops it easy by flying into Mildura. Well, I know thanks to the great sources out there that uh, one and two is Mildura to uh, Southern Peninsula and also Mildura to Traralgon. I think yeah. that's number one to, to that's our other city. One. Um, and obviously Warrnambool Mildura is number three, 530 kilometers as you mentioned. Best of luck to those four teams in D1 women. Let's press on to division one men. Same circumstances, semi-finals game one. Uh, the winners of the series go through to compete in the grand final. We kick off with Western Port, the fourth seed, hosting the number one seed in the Chelsea Gales. I'm extremely excited for these semi-finals. Uh, pick this division out ahead of finals is one to watch because mm. there was a, such a close grouping of teams in the top five, really. Mm -hmm. Top four especially, and we get one versus four. Western Port have been eight and four on their home floor. We get to see Dylan Travis go at it against probably the best player in Div 1 men for the last few years, yep. Corey Standifer. Travis had 34, 14 and 5 last week against Warnable. He's very efficient for how much he shoots the ball. To Chelsea, 11 and 1 on the road. They've won 14 straight. We've said everything there is to say about these guys. They haven't lost with Riggsy yet. And uh, I'm excited to see Dylan Travis absolutely cook here on his home deck, but well, it, it might not be enough. I think we'll see something similar to last week because when Western Port hosted Warnable. Uh, Xavier Blunt had 44, mm. did everything he could for the Seahawks. Uh, Travis had 34, as you mentioned. It could be similar, but just Travis and sw swap Blount out for Standifer. Mm. Could be very interesting. Well, it could also be Riggs or Brasser well, as well. True. That's They're, the upside Chelsea have right now. Got plenty of weapons to do the goals. That's semi-final game one, 6.30 uh, at David Collins Indoor Leisure Centre. Shepparton host Keysborough in the second semi-final. Uh, and Shepparton, they've got a great home crowd up there. Yeah, they've been 9-4 and four at home this season. Spencer Coleman last week, Massive. 32 points, 27 rebounds. You know, he pairs with Vines. Mm -hmm. They're a, a formidable 1-2 punch, and they've been great all season. Keysborough 8-4 on the road all season. Their form coming to the postseason wasn't too great. They lost to Boleyn and Warrandyte, but Shepparton's form wasn't outstanding heading into the finals either. They're ready to bounce back. Newby and Eng have been brilliant. This, I think, is as close or as an unpickable series as you can get. Both these teams have been so tight all season. Yeah, this is a great series. And if you're in Shepparton, 7.30 p.m. Shep Sports Stadium, this is one not to miss on Saturday night. Let's press on. State champ women. There is a qualifying final and also an elimination final. Let's start with the qualifying final. It is 7.30 p.m. Saturday. Knox hosting Sunbury. Yeah, Knox coming against Sunbury, who got the win over Waverley on the on, not on their home deck last week. Knox seven and two at home this season. Beckhot has been brilliant, going at nineteen points and fifty percent shooting. Do they get Karli Miovic back this week? Uh, I believe they do. I know my sources have said that uh, Miovic will return from injury this weekend. So that's that's huge Massive for Knox, especially because Sunbury have a fair bit of size mm -hmm. down there. At least Petaluma rolling around. Yeah, Joseph uh, Stockwell impressed as well. as well. She was great last week with 23 points and 10 rebounds. Mm -hmm. Six and four on the road. They've won nine straight. They've added some talent halfway through the season and. This is going to be a great, again, I can't really pick a winner here. You see the best team through the regular season against probably the most informed yep. team, two of the most talented teams in the comp going at it. Uh, winner goes to the grand final. Take your pick. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, mid-season additions. Karen Harrington has been huge for that Sunbury Jets lineup. Mm. Uh, they may not have lost without her, uh, with her. I don't, yeah, yet. not sure I, if they I don't have. think. Obviously, you mentioned the nine straight wins for the Jets. Um, you can't pick a winner or you can pick a winner? I think... Summary win. Ooh, oh, gee, it's hard. It's tough. They're flying at the right time of the season, let me tell you. Uh, do or die clash on the other game, however. Wa Waverley, this is on Sunday, by the way, 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. out at Waverley. Uh, the Falcons host Southern Peninsula. They didn't shoot well last week, Waverley against Summary. Just one of ten from three. They don't shoot many threes, and uh, I think that if they're, gonna sh if they're only going to shoot that many, they have to hit the ones mm -hmm. that they're taking. Um, they have a lot of weapons. We know that Kelly Bow and Tegan Cunningham have been great all yep. season. They need to step up. Southern Penn have been seven and three on the road. Won five of their last six, came into finals with great form. They shot it well last week at 46%. 14 of 31 from deep. 
if they... The, the big thing here is they're going to get up 33-point shots. That's right. And Waverley's only going to get 10 up. It comes back to the whole math problem. If you're shooting 30 to 40% from three, and another team's not shooting that many, it's tough to catch them. Well, maybe we can actually put up some shot charts there. There's Waverley's uh, shot chart for the season. Mm. Um, as you can see, they're not the biggest three-point shooting team. And if yeah. you look on the flip side, Southern Peninsula's right there. And they're all about three-point shooting, aren't and they? And a, a big thing that comes into that is uh, their stars shoot a lot of three. I know Jazz Shelley's a great three-point shooter, gets them up. She had 23 points, four rebounds, and six assists last week. Uh, Southern Penn, throughout the season, maybe would have won a few more games if they had all their players mm -hmm. available all the time. I think they're a very, very dangerous five seed, and I think this is going to be a very close game on Waverley's home deck. The other thing is you've got to mention, you, you say they chopped and changed with a couple of their younger players going mm. away. They also uh, departed an import, an import fairly yeah. early in the season and picked one up uh, with a big gap in between. Yeah, so that's that's obviously tough because you do your whole pre-season, you work in the sets and you know how you're going to play with each player and then you've got to change it up week four, week five, week six. Yep. It probably takes until halfway through the season for all your players to click, especially your stars. And then since then, they've really rattled home some wins. Absolutely. Two versus five in terms of positioning Here's elimination final. Uh, I mean, look, I thought Southern Peninsula were the Smokies when we started the finals. They knocked over... Uh, the fourth seeded team on uh, last week. Uh, whether they played Waverley or Sunbury, it was a hard ta task no matter what. I'm tempted to stick with the Sharks, but I know that the firepower at Waverley won't bow down. I think I'll take Sunbury in a tight one, but it's a very tough... I think it's a tough matchup for them. Cunningham and Bowen, I think, are tough matchups for Southern Penn. Southern Penn win this if they shoot it well from three. Yeah, the Sharks only just snuck past Team City last week, so I don't who, know. Who how do have much. some size inside, and I think that's where Summary might struggle a little. And I don't know how much that would take out of them as well. State champ men, uh, semi finals, game ones. This is week one of the semi finals. Hawthorne uh, defeated Casey last week. They host Eltham in game one. Yeah, they rattled home nicely. It was a little tight against Casey, and they came home really strong. Uh, nine and three at home this season. That was brilliant early season form. I don't think they lost at home until pretty much three quarters of the way through the season. Jack Barry continues to impress. He had 23 and seven last week. A very good young point guard. Last week, I don't know we're going to touch on him a little bit later, but last week we saw Jack Barry and Adrian Tamada, mm. two very young point guards, absolutely turn it on at the highest level in this competition, and they're going to be stars for years to come. Uh, Altham this year, nine and two on the road. Uh, Josh Sykes steps onto the floor. He seems to put highlights on every time. He, he feels does. more and more comfortable. 11 points, 8.5 boards, 56% from the field. Uh, he keeps it, seems to keep getting better and better. Uh, this one here is the Justin Nelson special, let me tell you, for <laughs> Hawthorne. If, if you're going to be any chance of winning this series, uh, Game 1, 7 p.m. Saturday night at Burundara mm. is a must win. Yeah, it's a huge one. Simple as that. I just think Altham maybe have a little too much talent. Well, if you slow down Kirksey, I think Altham's yeah. in the box seat right there for that. Sunday, uh, out at GSAC, 2pm, uh, McKinnon get to host Ringwood. This is David versus Goliath in many ways. Uh, the one seed host the six seed. Yeah, the six seed that's just scraping finals. Equal record with Knox, who weren't in yep. finals, got through on point differential. Mm -hmm. And uh, were great last week. They really were brilliant. They gave it to Waverley from the opening tip mm -hmm. and were brilliant. I think... The issue Waverley had was they didn't have enough size. They didn't have enough size off the bench that could match up with Deng and Stith. And mm -hmm. if Ivan was off the floor, it was tough. Ringwood, we know, are probably a little more versatile with their bigs. You know, they can have Sean Clark out mm -hmm. there and be huge. They can downsize a little bit. I think their wings are a little more versatile, and that allows them to match up better with McKinnon. Sure thing. Adrian Tomato, you mentioned in the Hawthorne game uh, alongside Jack Barry. Certainly in a rich band of form. He had 21, 7, and 9, 22, 8, and 3, 15, and 11 assists, 22, 8, and 4. That's just his last four games. So he's mm. playing uh, some incredible basketball right now. And I don't know if you could find two different point guards than Snow and Tamata. Absolutely. You watch, you watch Tamata for a game, and I don't think he goes at anything less than 100%. And, you know, that's no knock to Snowy. Snowy's just a lot more controlled and controls the game and the pace, and Tomato gets it and just goes. And that's what makes them both so good, really. 2 p.m. GSAC on Sunday. Uh, similar circumstances. McKinnon at home, this one's a must win if you're going to stay in the series. Yeah, must win. I think if they're to win, they need a huge game from Stith. I think that's Stith, sorry. That's where it comes down to. I think Tomato and Snow are both going to play well. Deng's going to do what he does. I think Stith versus Gibson is where this comes down to. 
Um, and McKinnon have to hold Gibson quiet because there's too many other weapons on Ringwood if he does get off the chain as well. Massive, super important game for both sides there. We've covered all 21 games. I haven't been counting, but I think it's 21. Uh, best of luck to all teams that are playing across finals this weekend, Saturday night and a couple on Sunday. Best of luck to our grand final teams. If you're 1-0 down, hopefully you get Sunday. If you're 1-0 up, doesn't matter if it's Saturday or Sunday, as you, you just hope to be winning. Uh, get out to all the games. Big crowds expected everywhere across the Big V. We'll be back Monday night, 5.30pm for Big V TV, when we wrap up all the weekend's games. We'll see you then.